Hey guys, welcome to the next episode about this old Craftsman guitar that I called the East LA Cutaway. I found it hanging on a garage wall in East Los Angeles. Got it for a really good price. The neck was off of it, a lot of cracks, pit guard was hanging, but um, we've done so much work to this thing. We fixed some cracks in the body, we put the neck back on, put a set of Gibson tuners on it, uh, did the usual stuff with coins and relic wood and all that kind of thing. And so now we're at the point where we are ready to hot rod this thing up with a pickup. Now, um, I want to tell you a little bit that um, Kay made this guitar for Spiegel, which was kind of a higher end mail order catalog, kind of like the target of back then. This was made sometime in the 50s, and it's a big bodied guitar. And in fact, it is the same model as the KK1 uh, model guitar. Big, thick, a lot of sound. It has tone bars in it. And um, we worked on a guitar exactly like this for Troy Murrow when we called it the Restaurant Junk Pile. I'll give you a link up there where you can watch what we did with that guitar. But the thing is, is this does not have braces in it, cross braces, and braces running horizontal to the body. It just has two big tone bars. One uh, runs down this side and follows the angle of the fingerboard, one on the other side. Now, when you start cutting into those tone bars, you end up affecting the tone of the guitar. So they would tune those tone bars and shave wood and do that kind of thing. It, it, it made the guitar less uh, vibrant or sonic or whatever word you want to use. But when you start cutting into those to put in pickups, you end up having to reinforce things and worry about if they're going to break or not. And you'll see in that episode where we did Troy's guitar, put Gibson pickups in it, that we had to do a lot of reinforcement up here because it was old and tore up from the floor up like this one. What we're going to do with this one is... Hey, we had Laurent Bompart do some custom art. I'm going to give you a link to him. Um, he does this industrial stuff. And because it was from East L.A., there's a lot of culture. There's a lot of different colors. I was actually going to take a, a picture of some graffiti art and try to match it to what was going on with this guitar, match it to East L.A. colors. But Laurent Bompart came through with this, and we're going to see this back on here. This is going to be integral to what we're going to do to make this thing have sound, believe it or not, because what we are going to do is we're going to put an original K. I'm going to give you a link to an eBay site down below. I got this for a reasonable price. It works. Um, in that shop, they sell uh, pickups that maybe have to be rewound, or the ones that they say work will work, and I, I got that. I'm going to give you... A link down below in the resources section. Now they called these Hershey bars or Kleenex box pickups and that's pretty easy to see why but you can see there's two holes. It's a relatively low profile pickup so it would ride right there and you could shim it up with pieces of wood or even cork paper if you wanted but the way these holes are is they bolt right into the tone bar. It can't be better so you don't have to cut any holes. Now this is, was put out by K on some guitars out of the factory. I want to show you this here. You've seen this one before. Do not covet this guitar. But this is one that came out of the K shop. It's an airline model made for Montgomery Wards. But it has what's called speed bump pickups on it. They have this little bump in the middle, thus the speed bump. This one you would actually cut a hole in the guitar pull it up through and then uh, the holes uh, you would run a screw through here so it appears to be uh, the body wraps around. This one required holes. There's two of them here. So many of these guitars got ripped. The, the pickups got ripped out of them for something else but yeah. Airline. Straight out of the factory. Dual pickups with controls. Now let me put this down before it falls down. Things in pristine condition. Galio Volt, I know you like that guitar. But you're also an old craftsman person. Hey, while we're throwing names around, 
I want you to listen to a link right up there. Get it at the end of, of this episode. Hover above the I card that's up there on your screen. But my friends, Margaret and Tara of Mr. Airplane Man, I want you to listen to that song up there, Sun Sink and Low. And I'm going to give you a link to how to get their music. You're going to love their music. Anyway, back to this thing. So what are we going to do about volume and tone control for the single pickup? Well, I got a surprise for you. There's a company named Shatton that makes thumb wheel controls, potentiometer, everything for volume and tone on these little spin wheels that we're going to mount and hide on that pick guard. So you're not going to have any holes here, but we're going to test this out to see if it works, see if it's durable. But you should be able to play this thing, run all the wiring through the F hole, and then turn it up and mess with the tone without anybody even see it doing it because they barely stick out in the pick guard. We're going to do that, but first thing we got to do is run some wires through this thing, and I'm going to show you how to run. We'll start off by doing the grounding wire. There's no grounding wire because there's no pickups. So we got to ground to the trapeze like I do, and we're going to put a pin end jack back here, and I'm going to show you how to weave something together where you only got the F holes to work, so you're creating a loom and pulling in a guitar and wiring it through an F hole. Um, it's pretty easy, you just have to think backwards and that's pretty easy for me. So let's get to the bench. I'm gonna show you how to wire this thing up. We'll try the Shatton thumb wheel system up and see what this pickup sounds like on this, the East LA cutaway. Let's go to the bench. All right, here we are first. Let's talk a little bit about my setup. I got a couple of anvil cases. Um, I put another one up here. Anvil cases are those cases. Let me move this back a little bit and show you are those cases that you see people using on movie sets around Hollywood and stuff. So if you're around LA or Hollywood, um, they're pretty easy to find. But if you're in Darby, Montana, maybe not so much unless you're on the set of that show they're filming up there about Yellowstone. Hey, I just gave you a big hint. Watch for that in the future. Anyway, so I've got uh, these cases. They're pretty good. You can store stuff in them and still move them around and use them for tables and stuff. But I put your face right in the work this time. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to pull off. I don't know why they use flathead screws. They're hard to get out. But you see, I got this double mint box here that I got a magnet on. I just put all the original parts. I keep that stuff there. And if I do a, a guitar for somebody, I give them their parts back. So we're going to pull off the tailpiece. We're going to use the original tailpiece. Of course, there's all kinds of, I don't know what that is, archaeological find. Anyway, I'm going to have to drill a hole in here because I'm going to ground the strings to this trapeze bridge. So that's going to take one wire. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a pin and jack. They call them this as an input jack. I'm going to, you can plug your cable into it, but you can also use it to put your strap on the end of it. So we're going to drill a big hole to do this, but I'm going to show you how to loom these together so they go inside, hook up with each other, not like that, just regular, and then come up through the F hole up here. Um, what are we going to need to do that? Well, let me show you. First off, you're going to need several colors of pushback wire. I call this stuff pushback wire because when I find the end of it, I can show you that you just push it back. There's the end of it. It's pre tinned and it's ready to work. Now I got three different colors. I want to be able to track what's going on inside the guitar. Three different colors. Always use pushback wire and I don't want to hear any pushback about that. You all hear me? You're going to set, need a set of sturdy wire cutters or dikes. Do not use your fret pliers for this. And you're going to need a couple coat hangers too. And you're going to need some two different pieces of tape there. Two different colors. You're going to need some zip ties and you're going to need some shrink wrap, okay? So let's get the holes drilled first, and then I'll show you the magic that is working through an F hole. Okay, I want to show you a couple few practical tricks 
Look at this. All my bits that I need are in here. I got the bits that are for... Wait a minute, I can't do this. I might get a union complaint from Chick Flick Teal Pointer. I've got the stuff for drilling tuners, for fret markers. I got graduated bits. I have Forstner bits for nickels. I have uh, extensions for drills, tiny, big, whatever. It's all right in here. Now, my drill setup. Oh, you're going to love this because it's straight out of the brain of... Mrs. Olson, where are you? Oh, yeah, you're right there. There's Mrs. Olson. Let's zoom in. Let's do the other zoom in right there. There's Mrs. Olson. Hi, Mrs. Olson. Anyway, Mrs. Olson provided us with the best drill holder you could ever have. Yeah, a screw through a Folgers can holds your drill bits right by the bench. Are you completely and utterly disamazed yet? Back to the task at hand look at that candle work dude awesome yeah i know dude okay so trapeze screws go there i'm going to put this right in the middle i'm going to drill a pilot hole first i'm not going to subject you to drilling noises and then i'm going to come down here after i know that i got to be down a bit and i'm going to do a pilot hole where this pin end jack is going to go so let's watch that Okay, I've got this countersink bit I've used 10,000 times if I've used once. I'm going to touch on these holes here. And so I'm not trying to put a bigger bit on here and wander all over the place. I'm going to do a little channel here and on those pilot holes so I can just put a bigger bit on and go to town. Now I'm going to use a fairly good sized bit for the wire that's going to come out of here. How big? About a little tad bigger than a coat hanger. You'll get that in a minute. Here goes the volume. Okay, now down here, I'm going to need a bigger bit that's going to be able to take the size of the pin end jack. Kill the sound. Alrighty, there we go. Just like that. Now, while we're here, we're going to drill the holes for the screws that hold the pin end jack while we're right here. Maximum efficiency. All right, we're gonna take coat hanger number one. We are going to dismember it like I already have right here. And it's going to go in this hole right here. I need for this coat hanger to be long enough to exit through this F hole somewhere up here. So I'm going to open this up just a little bit. And then I'm going to cut it off like so. Okay. Then, right in the trash can, Dr. J could have done better. Then I'm going to take the end of it like this and I'm going to bend it over so I can hang it on my pegboard. Now, Watch carefully. If I put this in here straight, it's going to go straight, correct? But if I put it in and gradually kink it this way as it goes in, by the time it gets up to said F hole, it's going to curve around and it's going to exit up. Ooh, look at that. Ooh, first shot. Check that out. You see that up there? That's magic. Plus, this thing stops it from going in. Now, guess what we're going to do? 
Yeah. We're going to repeat this with coat hanger number two. Now we're going to do something a little different with coat hanger number two so we don't get it confused with coat hanger number one. We're going to take a piece of this tape right here and we're going to put it right here and we're just going to wrap it around a few times like this. A lot of times like that and that's going to come in handy later so same thing this one we can bend a little bit right away because the hole is much bigger and then we just oh look at that in seconds that must be a new world record no not a yellow just a new world record man i saved a lot of production cost on this video shoot okay here we go okay put on your listening caps right now and pay close attention. I want you to notice that coat hanger number one has no tape. Coat hanger number two has orange binding tape. So we're going to put some of this blue tape on coat hanger number one. Now you want to remember the hole is smaller for coat hanger number one. So we're not going to put so much on there. Like this, okay, you see that? We're just gonna leave a little bit of it sticking out like that. Now, I wanna run a ground wire to whatever is gonna hook up to the ground wire that's gonna go to coat hanger number one. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna pull it back, you see that? Let's do that. We'll pull it back a ways like that. You see that? Now I'm going to take this said tape here. I'm going to unwind it a little bit and I'm going to put that stripped part right underneath the tape and I'm going to wind it up tight. And I'm not going to get too much tape up here around where it won't go through the hole. You see that? Now I can do this. You see that? Okay. Pay attention carefully again. I'm going to need a hot wire and a ground wire to hook up to my pin end jack. I'm going to hook those wires the same way. Got the white wire here. See that? I got the black wire here. You see that? So I'm going to push this back quite a ways. Then I'm going to wind the two together like this. I want to do it neatly, sweetly. That way they won't come undone when I put them don't buy me up tape. I don't want to mess up. I'm doing so good so far. Yeah, there we go. We unwind this tape like this. See that? We put those two wires in there like this. With me so far? Okay, the utterly disamazing part now. All the controls are going to be hid under the pit guard right here. So I need coming from the back, there's about 8 inches. There's another 8 inches. I need about 16, 18 inches of wire. So I'm going to take these two, hold them there, come back here, fold them, come back a little bit more. And that's the wire I need. I'm going to cut the black and white wire like so. You with me? Then I'm going to start here and think if I want these two wires to go together, two sets of wires, the single yellow wire and the black and white wire, I want them to split like this. You follow me? You see where we're going here? Let me get this up so you can see where we're going here. 
Now I'm going to take this set of wires, I'm going to straighten them out, I'm going to give myself about that much room, and I'm going to wind them together all the way down. Now I'm going to take a couple pieces of appropriate sh sized shrink wrap, namely one, two, three, I'm getting you guys ready for second grade now, okay, and remember I want a gap of about this much back here, so I'm going to slide this up here, I'm going to put one there, I'm going to put one there, and one about here. And then I'm going to take what happened to them. My matches. Some bookie somewhere. I don't involve myself in anything like this. Anyway. I'm going to melt that so these stay together. Like that, see? These will not come unwound now. I am not going to light up this guitar. There was a time when I wanted to, but not now. Okay, now watch very carefully. I'm going to measure out where I think these need to be, like so. And then, I'm going to begin winding all of these wires together. And because the first set is wound up, they drop in there just like a crane choker. You know what a crane choker is? Okay, I have made one loom of wire. We know that the yellow one goes to the ground on the trapeze. We know that the black and white ones go to the pin end jack. Now, I'm going to take some bigger shrink wrap like this, and I'm going to make it black shrink wrap because I don't want red, yellow, or green showing down through the F holes on this guitar. I'm going to bind all of these together by pushing them all through a single shrink wrap, like so. I'll catch up with you in a minute. Now, notice that when we get up to where, them, where we want those wires to branch off from each other and separate, we stop the shrink wrap. Now, we take our bookie matches Certainly not B-L-I-I. -I. You know who I'm talking about, Robert. Anyway, we're going to melt this all together like this. And we got a loom of wire that runs to two different places. I think you've seen this before in a car harness. Believe it or not, I'm not the one that invented this. But I'm going to be the one to invent burn cream here in a second. Yeah. So now you're asking yourself, what are we going to do? Well, we just got to pull these together at about the same speed to keep up with that gap, like so. Ooh, there's one. And there is two. Check me out. Yeah, y'all. So let me adjust this down a little bit. So check this out. If I try to pull them right now, they're not going anywhere. And so I'm going to take this wire because it's going to wrap around there several times. I'm just going to strip the end of it off. I don't have to worry about it going anywhere. The only thing I have to worry about is if it goes back in. I really don't want that. But I peel that off and push that back in a little bit and then I wind this around itself like so and end it back up where it will touch the screw that goes through that hole and then the trapeze. So I want to put the new screws in right away to make sure I don't lose this back into the body. 
Okay, guys, I want to point something out to you. These holes that held on that trapeze have been there literally since the invention of music. And you don't want to trust those on, I'm going to put a bit, set of big heavy strings on here. So, we're going to fix this using two bacon flavored toothpicks. They have to be bacon flavored toothpicks. Now, you're, you're actually needing one and a half. And you'll see that here in a minute. So you can maybe use the other one and be really generous and give it to your mother-in-law for Christmas or something. Anyway, you put a little bit of glue like that, like that, and like that. Okay? Now, you're going to take said bacon flavor toothpick. You're going to stick it in that hole and you're going to snap it like that. Point it in first. Snap it off like that. You with me? Last one. Snap it off. Put a bow on it. That's the one for mother in law right there. Now, these will dry. While the paint on our chick flick teal screws is drying, when we get back, we'll run those screws in. It'll be just like fresh wood and they'll never come off. Last thing, do not use the opportunity that you have at this time to get all of that nasty that's hiding underneath where that trapeze end was. I don't need another pandemic starting with this guitar. You hear me? There we go. That this screw has the ground wire wrapped around it, okay? And now it will seat right there, like so, and we will run it in very carefully. Let's pull out the big gun. All right, there we go. Now it's just a matter of soldering the black wire to the long lug and the short wire, the short lug to the white wire. And of course, we're going to shrink wrap both of those so they never touch each other and boom, put everything right back in and then go back up top up here, up here. Look up here. See up there? Yeah, and then we'll wire everything up up here. See you in a bit. This next part is relatively easy. Um, I've got a ruler that's got the metric system. There's nothing easier than millimeters. If this is uh, 58 millimeters wide, you can just get a calculator out if you can't use your fingers or an abacus and figure out that that's the middle 
You do the same thing with the pickup. Put a piece of tape on it. And then you lay it on here. You got two pieces of tape here because there's going to be holes on the side. And you just line this up. You take one of these little jobbies here and you just separate it by this like so. That's lined up in the middle. Hold it down. Take a pencil. Make a mark there. Make a mark there. And then you turn this over and you figure out the wire is coming out that far from that mark. You see it? It's right above it just a tad about right there. So I'm going to drill a hole here, a starter hole here, and a starter hole here. Now I'm going to remember that there's tone bars on this thing. You can stick a pencil in here and hit them right there. There's going to be a tone bar in here somewhere. And so I just kind of drill a couple starter holes. I can take a piece of a coat hanger like so figure out where my tone bars are and figure out from the angle here and measure this angle here to find out exactly where my tone bars are you see that anyway so we're gonna drill a couple starter holes with a very small bit like the kind we use to mark off our pilot holes for our tuners and then we're just gonna There we go. Went through. Didn't hit the tone bar. Let me get the light where I know where this one is. Bingo. And then this one is for the wire. There we go. Okay, now I know that the wire is a little bit bigger uh, than the hole I got, so I'm going to drill that hole just a tad bigger. Notice I have that taped off. So it doesn't split everything out. Okay, I'm going to want to take, once I get this pickup mounted, I'm going to need to put the wire in first. I'm going to need that wire to run and come up through this F hole. And uh, so i got to go from there to there. And the wire's long enough. I've already checked. But how am I going to get that in there? So I'm going to take some dental floss, common dental floss. I'm going to make a loop that's plenty long. And I'm going to tie it off to itself. I don't want to run a single strand in there. You'll see why in a minute or two. But I am just going to drop this down in there. And I'm going to stuff a bunch of this down in here, like so, till I got a ton of it. And then guess what? I'm going to take my piece of coat hanger, remember the one with the loop at the end? Yep. I'm going to go in the F hole like so and fish that and pull it. Then I can tie the end of the wire to it, get the wire to surface up here and link it in to my harness coming out of the body. Okay, watch me close now. I'm going to take a piece of our binding tape, which we have here, and I'm going to take our pickup, and that wire needs to come down through this hole and end up over here where we can hook it up to the rest of our wiring harness. So, I'm going to take this piece of tape, I'm going to put it right here, close to the end. You see that? Then I'm going to cut off my piece of dental floss here. Okay. You with me. I'm going to make sure I don't lose everything. Let's set this down. I think you'll still be able to see, hopefully. Only got a couple of hands. I'm going to take the dental floss and put it next to the wire and leave a bunch sticking out of the end here, you see. Then I'm going to wrap this tightly around 
the end of the pickup wire and wrap it around once like so and then I'm going to take the dental floss and pull it back in there like that you see that that way it's looped and does this you see that okay now when I pull push the wire down in the hole through the hole I just simply pull my dental floss over here and what do you know there it is this wire is old it wants to kink up but there we go I want to tie that off to make sure it doesn't drop down in there but now I can make my connections and that'll be the next part I'm going to go ahead and screw on the pickup where it needs to be and we're good Okay guys, let's catch up. The tailpiece is on, the grounding wire is on, the input jack with the pin end is on, and let's go up to the top. There's the good stuff. Maybe we can zoom in. There we go. The pickup is on. The fancy Laurent bomb part pit guard has been cut out to accommodate that. There are no wires to be seen because they are all underneath here. Now what's left is this thumb wheel set up under here. And this thing will be screaming, I guarantee you. All right, guys. Now we're getting down into the end game here. And... You know that if you want to put a pickup on a guitar, you don't want to run to your amp every time and turn it up and down and adjust the volume and the tone. So we usually end up using these things, potentiometers, 500K is typically what we use, and one for the volume and one for the tone. And so we would typically install these together You've seen this a hundred times, and you drill more holes in the body of the arch top. We want to avoid that this time. So we're going to try something new, and that is Shatton Designs T2 500K Thumb Wheel Control. What does that mean? Well, it means this. You have the equivalent of two of these right here. Now, you can snap this in half it's a circuit board right here um, something you're going to need here before we get into this let's get into a couple things we're going to need first off if you've got one of these jobbies let me spin the camera around one of these jobbies here that lets you get the chick flick teal pointer out and hold things that's good if it's got a light on it and a magnifying glass that's good i found this thing it could the base could be much uh, heavier but you know how it is a wet sponge you're really going to need preferably a soldering iron with an adjustable heat range but certainly you want a tip that is pointed and clean and small you're going to need some solder of course um, but I'll tell you something really cool I don't know if you've ever seen one of these if you're not an old man but it lets you put something under there and actually see what you're doing. Like this jobby, for example. See that? Looks much bigger. Now, if you look right there, some of those points there have to be, let's, there we go. Some of those points there have to be soldered together and 
this thing is already soldered up for you so it's ready to go now there is a set of instructions that come with this thing and you can wire it so one of these is the volume one is the tone you can set it up to where it goes somewhere on the guitar uh, pointed this way or this way depending on who wants what if somebody's left-handed or right-handed like I said you can actually split this in half right there very carefully and have two volume controls whatever you want to do but the bottom line here is this thing I was kind of apprehensive about it um, and and I'll tell you why it's just that you really really look at something like this and wonder how can this here be this well I'll tell you what it is and um, what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna mount this upside down on this fingerboard or, or not fingerboard this pit guard can you see them right there they just barely stick out and I can run the volume and the tone right there while I'm strumming and playing and you never see this so I'll tell you what I've already put this on the guitar and I'm going to tell you a couple things that I did that are going to make it easier for you. Okay, first, you know we ran the wires up and made a harness. So do I really want this mess coming up to attach here? No, I don't. So what I did was I cut three little jumper wires of pushback wire. One was going to be the ground. One was going to be the hot wire to the input jack and one was going to be the hot wire to the pickup and then what I did was I laid them all where they needed to be now notice I'm not telling you where to solder this stuff because you can do any number of things with these and there's good instructions there and again if you want to flip it upside down if you want them to go one way or another but basically I ground I I put those can can let's get this where you, where you can oh look at that right there you might actually be able to see that so I put the jumper wires can you see the pencil yeah I put the jumper wires in my case this was the ground this ran to the input jack and this was a hot wire to the pickup now the tone control on this was really easy because all I had to do is take this little tiny capacitor with these little tiny you see those right there this is a pencil unmagnified same pencil magnified those had to fit in a set of these holes right in the middle here now let me tell you something about this gadget right here let's get this up out of the way you don't have to take, doesn't take too much of soldering iron to touch that and fry the whole circuit board. But beyond that, heat will ruin the capacitor. It'll just ruin it. So what you have to do is you take what's called a heat sink. Could be Reynolds wrap, could be this alligator clip, and put it between your work and where you're soldering and what happens is when you touch that the heat will go to here and never make it to here you want the heat focus here this is the quickest way to burn up one of these sets is to try to solder this without a heat sink but if you've got that like so and you've got the right soldering iron boom boom I would put this on before I did those but boom boom and you're done now I also made sure that I cut short pieces and color-coded pieces of shrink wrap and I put them on here and I also had one down here so we have two pieces of shrink wrap on each one of these jumper wires guys 
I was shocked at how quickly this came together, how easy it was, and you just have to be careful. Um, they're certainly more expensive, but if you start taking a look at an old arch top and wondering, if I drill a hole in the body and put a couple of these in, and somebody drops it, bum rushing you on the stage, and cracks your arch top, psh, you're done. So, I'm going to pull the guitar up here, show you what I did, and then we're going to put everything on here and get this thing wrapped up so it's ready to go. Believe me. All right, let's have a look here. All these wires come up out of the body, and I'm going to be using some zip ties here before the day is over, of course. But I want to make sure, let's get some things out of the way here. There is a screw here that mounts the pit guard right up here. There's also a bracket over here that elevates the pit guard slightly like this. Now, I had to modify the pit guard to accept um, the pickup. So nothing's in the way there. So I kind of want to take a look. Do all the holes line up? Everything is there. So where do I want to hide this thing? Well, the wires are going to be back in here. We're going to zip tie them. They're going to end up being down in here like so. But it's going to sit about like that. And what do you know? That is going to be right about... There on our pit guard. Do you see that? Everything is just barely sticking out. Do you see that profile? While I'm strumming, all I gotta do is reach down and turn this, the volume and tone. So, double-sided 3M sticky tape on this thing, on here, and I'm done. It's that simple. Then I'll hook up everything. Of course, again, I'm gonna zip tie these. You don't want these bouncing around. Pull them up tight. Remember, we put a lot of time and effort into making sure everything was stable and not too sloppy back there. So it's all coming together now. So let me get that done. You don't need to watch this. It's just simply double-sided tape on this, under here, bolt this thing up. All right. I'm turning them right now. Check that out. Easy money. Okay, time to bundle these up. The capacitor is down in there. Resistor. Thingamajig. Hid back here. I can put a little piece of tape on there. But this thing isn't going anywhere. The only thing I'm really concerned about with this is how long will this stick on here? I'm, I'm kind of threatened to glue gun it or something like that, but I don't think I will. We'll leave it sit like that, but... I'm going to bundle these up, zip tie them off, stuff them down in there. Those jumper wires worked out nice. And because I did that, look at that. Everything sits real nice. All right, let me bolt this thing up and we'll finish up the episode. Okay, check me out, man. I just got home from some regional school board association meeting. Yeah, believe it. I got proof. I bought a bunch of raffle tickets, right? And I won the coolest prize ever. I won this purple haze all through my brain. Chick flick teal painted up pumpkin. Pumpkin. No. Not the pumpkin y'all know and love. Pumpkin. Remember pumpkin? But this pumpkin, I walked out of there coveting, being coveted, whatever. Everybody wanted this. Well, y'all can't be me. Okay, so anyway, I want to wrap this episode up, even wearing a clown suit. But there it is, the East L.A. cutaway. The most important part about this is it makes sound. Now, I got a junky old amp here and a junky old chord. So, acoustically, it kind of sounds okay. But, 
look at this. See these thumb buttons right here? You almost didn't see them, right? Oh, listen, listen. Ooh, there's tone. Ready? Let's prop this up here, so. Oh, there it is. Let's just do a little bit of that, and I will do tone. crawls on its belly like a snake, the East L.A. cutaway. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go find somebody who can play this thing and make it sound good, but it is hooked up, ready to go, and I really like that volume control thing right there. Tone and volume, probably one of the easiest things I ever did to wire something up. Look at that Laurent bomb part pit guard. All those East L.A. matchbooks and that bolted on neck. You can't beat that. I just got to put a grease zerk in it right here and have Tammy sign it and it's good to go. Hey, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out the playlist for this thing right up there right about now. It, it's way too late. Chick Flick Teal Pointer already went night night little night night. I'll see you next time.